Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome back to the Fire Pit. I'm Josh, British name Reginald. And well, last week we wrapped up our second journey of season two with 2013's biographic film, 42, The Story of Jackie Robinson. Well, we're about to uh, impart on our ninth journey. Is it our ninth journey? It's our ninth journey. Uh, second journey of season two. And it has been, uh, it's been really great. I've had a lot of fun doing this with you two. Not you, Tom. But um, it's the we're on to our next adventure. Two. Yes, it is the third journey it's of season two. It's the third journey of season two. The first okay, one I'm going to redo that line. Yeah. I'm going to redo that line. And I'm going to keep it in. Because you made a joke about me. <laughs> I did. I did. Don't make fun of the editor and hopes to get something edited out. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, Got to know what side your bread's buttered on there, Josh. <laughs> when you drop your bread and it falls into a pile of shit and you make fun of your best friend and he's the one who picks it up for you and hands it to you and uh, tells and tell you what side it landed on. I'm pretty sure knowledge. you would tell. Yeah, that I think you could knowledge. tell this one. <laughs> this one. Okay. really getting away from us already. It is, it is. So uh, we are now on our ninth journey, third journey into season two. The first two journeys were, were pretty great, and I've had a blast doing this with you guys, not you, Tom. But that being said, we do have some rules in this here selection section where we pick the next five films to our next destination film. We'll have that more in a moment. But to explain these rules, I'm going to go ahead and pass things over to Nigel. Nigel. Thank you, Josh. Dan here. British name, Nigel. And as Josh just said, welcome aboard if you're new. Welcome back if you're a vet. This is the Fire Pit Podcast. And we watch and discuss movies and have a little bit of fun along the way with uh, skits and satire and all kinds of crazy shenanigans. Whether the movie is good, bad, or somewhere in the middle. We don't really care. But how we do this is simple. Every six weeks, we pick a destination film and then spend six weeks getting to that film by linking an actor or actress from the movie we watched the week before with no repeats during that journey, meaning we can't use the same actor or actress as a link more than once a journey. However, there's a sidebar that the same actor or actress can be featured in a different movie. You just can't link them. So all of our films that we've reviewed from the whole last year, because we've been doing this for a year now, guys, all of our films... From last week's 42, link all the way back, even to our prototype episode, Showdown in Little Tokyo. It's kind of like Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, only Kevin Bacon isn't the end goal. And actually, we've only gotten to one film he's been in so far. That's, wow. Yeah, we've only only gotten to one film that has Kevin Bacon in it so far. And that was Apollo 13, way back in the Road to Independence Day. Man, yeah, it's been almost a year since we've watched Mm -hmm. a Kevin Bacon film. Oh my god. So, yeah, but the game is similar. Um, As I said, we cannot repeat the same actor or actress from a movie. And also when we present our list tonight here in a little bit, uh, we've added a new rule over the last year. We try to add one, two or three films in our list that we either haven't seen, haven't seen in a while or something like that. Try to broaden our horizons a little bit. That way, you know, we mix it. We're not just action movies or we're not just... uh, dramas you know maybe we got a little romance movie in there a romantic comedy or two something like that so kind of mix things up a little bit uh and am i missing any rules guys no. uh, they're, they're like automatic rule. to me so i don't think about it we have a loose rule that we're not allowed to pick a movie that we've watched in at least a year um, given that we're a year old podcast that technically opens up a few of our first movies but that is a very loose rule so if it does happen to come up it isn't illegal but Granted, there's a billion movies out there, so we're not necessarily trying to get to them. But if yeah, we do, no like, rush. If, yeah, yeah, if we do end up somehow getting to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two again, if somebody presents a movie with that um, in one of their lists, that's legal. Um, but if it's been in the past year, 
They can't do that. Yeah. So still most of the movies we've done are off the board and that's okay. Like you said, Josh, there's a billion movies out there. So yeah, yeah. we're not actively trying to redo it, but you know, some of those early episodes I would like to redo in our current format. Yeah. And we did add another rule. We're no longer allowed to, unless the movie is really far back in time, like pre 1970, 1960, we are not allowed to link an actor or actress coming out of a destination film. If they were linked going in. For example, our last journey, we used Alan Tudyk to link him from A Knight's Tale to 42. He's not allowed to be used to come out of 42. So Mm -hmm. the only, yeah, yeah, we kind of realized we did that, I think, two times. I did it right after the Mr. Smith journey or something like that. Like I, well, I think that was one of those situations where it was okay because Mr. Smith was hard to get. Yeah, we did it after Mr. Well, we did it after Mr. Smith and I did it after Superman. Yep, that because was the that other was, one. That yeah, was one that's where, when we realized we did it. That's when we realized we're like, oh, we should probably not do that. So yeah, yeah. Well, that was that was well on all of us. None of us picked up on it. So yeah, it wasn't until we were watching Hoosiers we were like, wait a minute, we used Gene Hackman last time. <laughs> yeah. Like, whoops. Not that we were complaining because that turned out to be one of our favorite films of the journey, but still. But yeah, but the rules are rules. And, you know, I do kind of like the amendment. It, again, broadens horizons. So and like Tom said, it prevents us from watching the same 10 actors in the same 10 films every year. The rules are fluid. They may change down the line. But as of this selection section, this is what these rules are going to be. Yeah. Well, now that the recap is done, we're going to get going towards the destination. I want to hear where we're going next, even though I already know. But I know our audience wants to know where we're going next. So I'll kick things over to Tom. Well, thank you, Nigel. Tom here, British name Thompson. So for our first journey, we saw Harrison Ford as a lovable rogue Han Solo in Empire Strikes Back. Now on our second journey, we saw him play pivotal baseball executive Branch Rickey in 42. Well, in six weeks, we're going to see the would-be carpenter and pilot in his other most iconic role, that of Indiana Jones in Raiders of the Lost Ark, or Indiana Jones uh, and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, as it was later retconned. We're not pedantic at all on this podcast, but we're close to the 40th anniversary of the film's release, as it was released on June 15th, 1981. So anyone with a 1981 birthday, I just outed you, you turned 40. (laughs) There, there, Nigel. There, there. And also, come on, it's just an iconic, classic action film. And frankly, we are excited as heck to get to it. So, now that we know the destination, let's figure out the journey. So, the three of us are going to present two to three lists each, round robin style, and then we debate on how we're getting to Indiana. And this is the optional. That's that's to- easy. That's easy. You just take 75 North to I-70 West. The movie, take- the movie, not the state. Oh, my bad. And since yeah. I, what was that? Sorry. Go ahead. I was telling him how to get to Indiana. I know. I was writing it down. I was. No. Oh. And since I won last time and because Dan made me go through all that, I'll be presenting last. So we'll start things off with Josh. Well, thank you, Thompson. Thank you. All right, so my first list is called Beware. Nothing is as it seems. We start off taking James Pickens Jr., you know him from The Lovable Doctor from Grey's Anatomy, to the movie, bet you didn't know he was in this one, Venom. I didn't know he was in that. The 2005 movie that takes place in southern Louisiana. Oh, Oh, <laughs> not the Tom Hardy fun movie. Okay. My <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> this is a horror film about too many souls stuck in a single body and they have to hunt it down and kill it. Oh, no. Yep. Okay. Great start, right, but, Josh. <laughs> Swing and a miss. From there, we're going to go to a movie that uh, where a group of superheroes form together to become a team. In 1999's Mystery Men. Who who's in this one? Who's connecting? We're taking Stacy Travis to Mystery Men. Okay, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. But... Never have yep. I. Hmm? Good choice. Okay, good choice. Good choice. We're coming back. I'm going to be delaying who's going into it because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But from Mystery Men, you guys are going to like this. We are going to go to the Avengers via Eddie Izzard. 
It's a 1998 film starring uh, Sean Connery, uh, Uma Thurman, and Clive Owen. I hate this list. Yeah, (laughs) I do too. Moving on. (laughs) Well, from the Avengers, we are going uh, to another, well, to a comic book movie, this time from made by DC, where they will dole out justice (laughs) in their league of extraordinary gentlemen. We're taking this via Sean Connery. And then, no. Oh, oh. Oh. Why can't you go back to presenting lists with episode one? Yeah, this is the <laughs> film that killed his career. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, you'll like the next one. Because... <laughs> You've been saying that for the last four films. <laughs> <laughs> but this next film, um, he's a barbarian who goes on a very fantastic adventure. Um some people call it one of the best D&D based movies of all time. We're taking Terry O'Neill to Cole the Conqueror, starring Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> wow, this is uh <laughs> this is uh well, this is something, all right. This is a list, that's for sure. You might uh, want to redo well, your algorithm thing there, Josh. I think it's broken. The machines but, uh, are rising up already. <laughs> the machines gaining sentience is sabotaging the podcast. <laughs> but we follow Pat Roach from Cole the Conqueror to Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> well, oh. Oh. hey, the lists, the, the names look good, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they would. It, it, you should have titled this clickbait. <laughs> That that's what the, that's what this list is. This list is clickbait. Uh, he was right to say beware. No, he did get did. that part of, of the. Uh, Let's list put it like right. this: I had a lot of fun making this list, but I have no intention of picking this list. <laughs> well, spoiler Let's alert, like Josh! The, the, the average the average uh, review on those five movies is less than a five out of ten. <laughs> Venom is a 4.6. Mystery Men is the highest at a 6.1. Avengers is a 3.8. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is 5.8. And Cole the Conqueror is a 4.9. I've heard Cole reference before, so uh, I could go on a rant about this list now, but I'm going to... I'm Call the Conqueror. In- I've seen that movie. Call the Conqueror would have been a huge movie in the 80s. It was just... That was a movie that was made 10 years too late. Like, that would have been right up there with, like... um uh, some of those other uh, 80s fantasy films that were that kind of like cult classics today, you know. But yes, that, that list is terrible. I uh, kind of decided to use that one as fuel for the fodder. Oh. I knew it's not going to get picked, but it was a lot of fun making. When I saw Venom, I'm like, I know what the concept of this list is going to be. And you found uh, <laughs> all the films to fit that concept. <laughs> beware, beware. Yeah. Oh, beware. Please, Dan, tell me you've got something better than this. All right. Well, uh, since that was my fantastic list, Nigel, do you have anything better? I'm uh, (laughs) Yes. (laughs) The answer is yes. Always to that question with that list. Um, Yeah, I've got a I've got a couple of good lists. I'm going to save my really good one, I think, for my next turn. But I am going to go with the one I was actually going to go with before I came up with that one on the way home from work today. So. Uh, well, tell I'm, us a story about coming home from work because the listeners oh, haven't heard that one. Okay. Uh, all for the last like four or five weeks, uh, I've been trying to get a list that had two or three really good movies going into Raiders, but it was only making it in seven, not six. And I couldn't figure out how to make it in six. And then I was driving home from work tonight. I was at a red light. I heard the actor's name in a radio commercial and it hit me. I'm like, wait, he's in the. <gasps> and then I came to me I'm like i know how to do this in uh six films so yeah mm. uh but i'm gonna present my first list is gonna be the one that i was actually going to champion tonight and i still might it's especially stacked up to josh's list there but uh <laughs> so uh i will champion i will go with this one first i call this one gunfights bar fights and god okay <laughs> i don't know how i feel about this list okay so first we take chadwick bozeman from 42 and go to 21 bridges Okay, okay, okay. We've been trying to get to that for a bit. Then we take Keith David from 21 Bridges and go to Roadhouse. Nice. Yes. From Roadhouse, we take Sam Elliott and go to Tombstone. From Tombstone, we take Michael Bean and go to The Seventh Sign. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bad film. Yeah. <laughs> okay. From The Seventh Sign, we take Jurgen Prochnow and go to Air Force One. 
And from Air Force One, we take Harrison Ford to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, I didn't realize he was in that one. Wait, it's the seventh sign. Is that the one where he's playing against death in... No. Is that that fantasy one? Or no, no, Daniels? no. I, I believe the seventh sign is a movie that stars Kyle Reese from Terminator um, as he tries to stop the apocalypse or he tries to stop the Antichrist from being born or whatever. I remember seeing it. No, wait, I've never seen it. I don't think, well, I've never seen it unedited. I've seen it ages and ages and ages ago on some kind of like schlocktoberfest that TNT late night movies with Jim Bob or whatever his name was would do. It was like, I remember just thinking to myself as I was watching that movie, why isn't this an episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000? So, because oh, even they have standards. Oh, yeah. I've, yeah. I've seen most of that film. The ending is infuriating. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's not a great film. It, it'll be a fun episode to record. Absolutely, it's not a great film. But yeah, that's that's the list. Um, I'll, I'll present first. Oh, I'm glad this isn't the one you're championing us because ouch, seventh sign. The rest though. The rest are pretty solid, but damn yeah. that one. Ooh. I know a lot of people like Tombstone. I was kind of impartial to it. Uh, we, you have a bias against um, westerns. That is a known quantity. Well, no, it's not just that. Like I acknowledge that it's a good movie. I did enjoy it. It's just like I don't see why everybody raves about it. Like I just thought it was like you know maybe an eight out of ten. Like people probably call me sacrilegious for saying this, but I would put it on par with the re- RoboCop reboot. Oh, I think it's way better than the RoboCop. Yeah, reboot. wow. Eight out of ten, Josh. You put that RoboCop reboot, a reboot way too high. I liked it. I think Joel Kinnaman is fantastic in that movie. I think some of the story elements are kind of weak, but that's a story for another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Nigel. Okay, but not a bad start, Nigel. Okay, so that, that's my list first. Like I said, the seventh sign, weak film. I'll We'll argue it later. Let's continue on down with the list uh, uh, during round one here and go with Tom, the winner of last time of or not of the last journey. Um, much to the agony well, I wouldn't, of all. <laughs> there's ahead, not a winner go. or a loser in this. We all present lists and we all have e- e- equal say. But I will say that the only loser in last week's uh, last selection section was us. I'm going to say that if we went with your first list, there absolutely would be a loser. And it would be, and it would be the list. It would be us. Yes. It would be all of us. Yeah. Yes. 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 So thankfully I've learned my lessons. I have um, picked up some pointers and I've decided to whore myself out to the, uh, the two people I'm trying to (laughs) slut it up, Tom. Yeah. Try to uh, pander to here. So I'm starting off taste of, of air quotes winning. Yes. (laughs) And so like Hootie and the Blowfish with one good album, I'm just going to keep repeating that same thing over and over again and i'm starting off with what i call 80s up in this place (laughs) now i'm curious Uh, so we take john c mcginley from 42 and hit the waves with point break nice (laughs) love that film yes um from point break we get a little dirty with patrick swayze in dirty dancing Ooh. And since she's already dirty um, from dancing, she's going to get dirty killing some damn commies. Jennifer Grey in Red Dawn. Nice. And from Red Dawn, we take Powers Booth to a what's in the box film called A Breed Apart. Oh, um, today I learned that that. movie. Today I learned that movie exists. The uh, really brief about it a conversationist and a widow meet a mountain climber hired to steal bald eagle eggs. It's got Powers Booth, uh, Kathleen Turner, and Rutger Howard, who takes us into Blade Runner. And from Blade Runner, we take Harrison Ford into Raiders of the Lost Ark. Not a bad list. That's a good list. That's a pretty good list. Yes, yes. Uh, the Breed Apart is the What's in the Box film, definitely. Um, I don't think it's as low as Josh's uh, first film or first films there, uh, Avengers. It's got a 5.5 on IMDb, but we can discuss more of it when we get the chance to. So so Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze were both in Dirty Dancing. Was Patrick Swayze? He was in Red Dawn? Yeah, he's yes. in Red Dawn. He's yep. the, the protagonist. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I was, but yeah. So they're both in Dirty Dancing and Red Dawn. Yeah. Yes. So I huh? either cool. way we could flip the order around, but I yeah. I well, thought it was well. 
No, because Patrick Swayze was not in. I mean, Patrick Swayze was in Point Break, but Jennifer was not in Point Break. So yeah, we do still have to keep to that order. But mm -hmm. so yeah, and you also three, need Powers Booth. Yeah, so that'd be three movies in the row with Patrick Swayze in them, but only one connecting him. Not a bad yes. way to and go. I had a list with Patrick Swayze as well. Oh. Roadhouse, yeah, because he's in Roadhouse. There we go. It, it's That's good. funny. Tom, go ahead and segue me so I can say something ironic too. Oh, so we've all set our first list. So now for list number two, let's head on back up to Josh. Well, in a totally original move, <laughs> I title this list, We Must Find dot 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 exclamation mark. <laughs> Every single God. movie in here is about finding something to include the uh destination oh, i have a list like this go ahead go but um with a little bit of overlap from uh your list there tom we're gonna take john c mcginley to point break nice 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 but unlike your list this is where we're gonna diverge where we're trying to find the uh you know aka the 1991 version of fast and the furious <laughs> or as we like to call it in 2000 Point break with cars, but uh, we take Patrick Stewart to a fun little 2004 film called George and the Dragon. This is very much a what's in the box film yeah. for me. I watched the trailer and it stars um, King or the Prince Edward from A Knight's Tale as the protagonist with Piper Prebo, Michael Clark Duncan and Patrick Swayze in a interestingly looks like a low budget comedy fantasy movie very interesting looking i don't know it's uh got a 5.7 out of 10 but from point break mm -hmm. you mean not uh, from, point break, from george and the dragon george and the dragon yes we follow michael clark duncan to a movie where they are trying to get to a nightclub in a night at the roxbury oh god i love that film yes <laughs> I, I was originally going to go with a, a comic cavalcade and have all comedy films, but I just couldn't get there in the way I wanted to get there. Mm -hmm. But um, from A Night at the Roxbury, we follow Dan Hedaya to Ransom, a film where they're trying to get Mel Gibson's son. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that one. Yeah. Yep. And then from uh, Ransom, we're going to go ahead and follow Mel Gibson to a movie where he's trying to win the jackpot in Maverick. Good choice. Yes. That 1994 film where uh, Mel Gibson plays the titular role of Maverick trying to get into the big stakes poker game. Mm -hmm, Fantastic mm -hmm. movie. I love that movie. But also in that film is one Alfred Molina who will take us into Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's right. right? Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the guy that gets stabbed at the very beginning with the, the spike thingy. Yeah. Shouldn't have betrayed Indy. Yeah. Throw me the aisle. I'll throw you the whip. Adios, senor. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that George and the Dragon, Josh, but this is already oh, oh, I a don't, much that's, better movie list. Like I said, my first one was I was not great, but uh, I make up for it. Yeah, this one definitely, um, definitely cutting the mustard for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw it, Night at the Roxbury pop up, and I'm like, I've got to get to that film. Yeah, we can take our time getting to that film. That is an awesome film. You can shut uh -huh, your whore mouth. Whatever. It's, it's not a good film. That's, oh, no, it's not. not. lie. It's not a good film, but it's a fun-ass film. I love that movie. So do I. I mean, God, that's that's a high school memory for me. Oh, But anywho, that's my second list. So, uh, Nigel, how's about your second list? This list is actually similar to Josh's. It's called In Pursuit. Uh, every one of these movies is about the pursuit of something. So from 42, we take Brad Bayer to Ford versus Ferrari. Ooh, Ooh. Good Ford versus Ferrari. We take Josh Lucas to American Psycho. <laughs> from American Psycho, we take Chloe Zavingi. Zavingi? I don't know how to say your last name. To Zodiac. Eh, that movie was kind of boring. From... Zodiac, we take Robert Downey Jr. to U.S. Marshals. He was in that? Yep. From U.S. Marshals, we take Tommy Lee Jones to The Fugitive. And from Isn't the U.S. Marshals a sequel to U Fugitive? Yes, we're going backwards. Okay. And from The Fugitive, we take Harrison Ford to Raiders of the Lost Ark. All of those films involve the pursuit of something or someone. 
Not bad. I definitely dig your starter. I have not seen Ford v Ferrari yet. Yes, I did. I liked it, but I like funny enough, right before this one, I just watched the movie Rush starring Thor and uh, Zemo. I thought that was a better film. Ooh. Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's actually pretty good. I really enjoyed it. I've, but I... uh, Ford v Ferrari is still really good. I'm not trying to dog that film. From this list, I've actually only seen The Fugitive and Raiders of the Lost Star. Or Ra- Fugitive, Raiders, and Psycho. I have not seen Zodiac. I've never seen Ford vs. Ferrari. And I've actually never seen U.S. Marshals. I see. I've seen all except Ford v. Ferrari on this one. Oh, actually, I take that back. I've not seen U.S. Marshals either. At least not all I've of it. I've seen U.S. Marshals. I recently watched Zodiac. It was not that good. I didn't understand the hype. Uh, it's a different kind of a movie i think tom would enjoy it a lot but um yeah anyways this is leaps and bounds still better than uh josh list number one it's got uh iron man and uh, hulk before they were iron man and hulk in it yes they do i say i love that movie came out what 2006 yeah yeah so it's yeah it's got mark ruffalo and robert downey jr beautiful choice nigel beautiful choices Say list number two is pretty good. I'm really excited for list number number three. But before we get to my list three, we need to get to your list two. So what do you got, Tom? All right. So list number two, I am calling historical liberties or <laughs> events in this movie may not have happened as they appear. <laughs> so we are taking first John C. McGinley to a movie uh uh, what's in the box sort of movie called Sweet Liberty. It's a film that my dad loves and I've only seen like a little bit of it. It was directed and written by Alan Alda and stars Alan Alda and Michael Caine, Bob Hoskins, Michelle Pfeiffer, etc., etc. And of course, John C. McGinley. And from Sweet Liberty, we take Michelle Pfeiffer to Dangerous Minds. Dangerous Minds, of course, the 90s film about Michelle Pfeiffer teaching um, a, an inner city Oh, school. that's the one where uh, Gangster's Paradise got popular. Yes. Yes, indeed. I and only know the lyrics to Amish Paradise. Go ahead. Well, it's the superior song. Um, everyone knows this. It is. Let's be honest. And in Dangerous Minds was Courtney B. Vance, who takes us into the future and then the, pa- the 80s that could have been with Terminator Genesis. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> still better Ironically than Dark enough, Fate. better than Dark Fate. Yeah, way better Jinx. than Dark Fate. I mean, that's not saying much, but still. No, no. That's, they, they put the that uh, bar on the ground and then poured cement over it. It's like two different shits and just one smelled worse. <laughs> that was Dark Fate. Go ahead. Yeah, but thankfully, someone that's not going to smell is J.K. Simmons in Moonlight. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. I'm getting an envelope. Correction, that's La La Land. La La Land is the movie. See why I did that? Like the Oscars. I, I got, yeah, we got it. I thought it was funny. Wait, Omni Man is in La La Land? Yes, Omni Man is in La La Land. And if you haven't seen Invincible, watch it now. It's all right. I like the comic better. It's probably better, but I love the show. But in La La Land is Ryan Gosling, who takes us to Blade Runner 2049. A mystery where things are not how they seem to be. And then, of course, Blade Runner 2049 is Harrison Ford into Raiders of the Lost Ark. About a 1940s that um, a little more exciting um, and more magical and with more Arcs of the Covenant destroying Nazis than actual history probably had. That's because Raiders takes place in the 30s. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out, Nigel. <laughs> Face. <laughs> I look like an ass now. Thank you. I have not seen Genesis. I have not seen La La Land. I have not. Well, and I have not seen Sweet Liberty except the very ending. Uh, Sweet Liberty is a story about um, Alan Alder's character trying to get a movie made about um, George Washington. And of course, Hollywood decides, you know, the story of George Washington needs motorcycles and excitement. And they just totally Hollywood it up. And it, it's a frustration and it's a comedy there. Very mm. highly rated too. I think it's no, I take that back. It's a 5.8. Never mind. I thought it was higher rated than that. So, but those are the three I have not seen from that list. Um, 
love Blade Runner 2049. That's one I've been hoping to get you guys to for a long time. I haven't even seen the first one. Thankfully, you don't need to see the first one to see this one. That's the really? Thing. Oh, yeah. No, they the guys who wrote and directed it, it's like, yeah, we're going to assume that no one has seen this movie. So we'll uh, we'll play that into this movie. So it's it's good. But I'm not going to ramble too much further on that. That's the end of round two of the list. Any final thoughts or questions before I punt it back to the first with Josh? Uh, no, it's a pretty solid list. All right. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, cool. Well, no complaints so much. So, Josh, take us to round three. What's your what's your next list here? All right. Well, this this list is uh, I'm very proud of this list. I think this is a good one. But I call this one Adventures Through Space Time. Ooh, are we going to have the constable? Is this- yes. It's back to space time. And Constable Richie. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad you, you caught that. <laughs> thank you very much. But um, so with the exception of a couple of films, every movie in here involves space or time travel. But uh, the first movie, and with a little overlap from one of Nigel's lists, we're going to follow Chadwick Boseman to 21 Bridges. Nice. nice. And then uh, we are going to follow Taylor Kitsch to the 2012 over budget on the advertising box office flop that wasn't actually a bad film in John Carter. Oh, the Superman movie. <laughs> yeah, the, basically the one that inspired Luke Skywalker and Superman or whatever. Yeah. Yes. John Carter from Mars. Okay. Yep. I actually really liked that movie. It was I didn't think I would, but it was actually really good, but it was just marketed horribly. Anywho, from John Carter, I'm going to fuck mispronounce this name. There is uh Syrian Hens also played in the 1981 movie Excalibur. Ah, there's three hours of our lives. <laughs> Good film, though. But do you know who else was in uh, Excalibur? I didn't know this. Patrick Stewart? No, no, not Patrick Stewart. I'll tell you what, this much, he was strong with the force. One Liam Neeson. Oh, right, yeah, he is in that movie, yeah. So guess what we're going to follow uh, him to? Oh, God. The Grey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't <look> bullet dodged <laughs> that 2011 movie about uh where he gets into a plane crash and has to survive fighting wolves i don't know i haven't seen it but also in that movie is nonzo and nonzi onzo i don't know how to that's another name I'm, there's a lot of names i can't pronounce in this list but we follow him from the gray to 2013's ender's game Okay. Oh, I know the cat you talk about, Nanzo Nanzi. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, he was the uh, drill instructor. Yeah. In uh, Ender's Game. But as we all know, Harrison Ford was in that movie, and we'll take Harrison Ford to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Interesting list. Yeah, not a terrible list. I've only seen chunks of Excalibur. Never heard of the Grey. Um, really? No. I'd... That was like at the height of, uh, I think it was like, was it 2000? 11 everybody calls it the prequel to batman begins oh no this one um skirted under my radar big time ender's game i got okay no it's like i wanted to watch ender's game i haven't seen that in a few years and i definitely wanted to hit up 21 bridges yeah 21 bridges is one of those ones you guys have definitely uh played up pretty big so if hopefully we can get to that at some point but not a terrible list john carter i've never seen but now i'm curious to see how bad it is it's honestly not that bad like i was thinking it was going to be a train wreck but i ended up watching it and i'm like this isn't that bad mm. i saw it like twice the weekend it uh i finally got a hold of it i was just like like i don't think it's the greatest film ever made but i was surprised by it yeah. but we're rambling about these lists we haven't started but anyway, selling yeah. them yet so yeah 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 on to uh, Nigel's third list. Nigel's this the big one? This is it. This is the winner, guys. This is the winner. All right. So we all three want to see it. That's why we're starting with it. It starts with Chadwick Boseman to 21 Bridges. But what's the name of this list, by the way? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Who Can You Trust? Oh. So we go Chadwick Boseman to 21 Bridges. Then Keith David to The Thing. I love The Thing. Ooh, good choice. Then take Kurt Russell to Tango and Cash. Ah, nice. 
then take Sylvester Stallone to Nighthawks, then take Rutger Hauer to Blade Runner, and then you take Harrison Ford to Raiders. The list is called Who Can You Trust? Okay, this is a damn solid list, Nigel. Is This is the red light list, right? Yeah, this is the red light list. This is the one I was trying because I wanted to do... I was trying to get Nighthawks to Blade Runner to Raiders, and I couldn't do it in six. I was only doing it in seven. And then I heard Keith David's voice on a commercial on the car, and it hit me that he's in the thing. So I put him earlier in the list and raised Kurt Russell up from Tango and Cash. That way I could link uh, Russell, Stallone, Rutger Hauer, Harrison Ford. Nice, nice, nice. I've never seen Nighthawks. It's been oh, oh, it's been ages since Tango yes, and Cash. Go yes. ahead. Also, this is the list where I've the only movie I've seen is Raiders of the Lost Ark. I have not seen any of the other movies on this list. I have never seen the thing, and I've been dying to see it. Oh my god! Oh yeah, I've Ooh. never seen the thing, and I'm dying to see it because it is a stone cold classic. But I've got to see it. But yeah. Ooh, ooh, I, I've seen that in high school and I don't remember liking it. Well, that was high school, Josh. Keep that in mind. I mean, in these days of, you know, super glossy computer effects, a classic blood, guts, and animatronics horror film. Ah, good choice, Nigel. But yeah, this is my, this is the red light list. This is my champion. This is the one I want to do. Ooh, will my list number three compete? Hmm. Anyway, Josh, any any other thoughts about this one before I steal the show? Nope. All right. I thought you were dead for a second. <laughs> I was just rereading the list. All right. Well, Nigel, may I present my list that's going to knock all of yours off the pedestal? Sure. Go ahead. All right. And going back to me hoarding myself out. List number three for me is called A Summer of Classics. Almost all of these films were summer, well, air quotes hits, some of them. Uh, We start with Harrison Ford. Yes, I'm starting with Harrison Ford. Into American Graffiti, the movie that kind of um, got him on Lucas's radar. And from American Graffiti, we take Richard Dreyfuss to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Mm. I had a list that had those two in it at one point. I abandoned it after about the third one, though. Go ahead. Well, depending on what you had for the third one, this might have been that abandoned list because I'm taking J. Patrick McNamara to 1941. And from 1941, I take Dan Aykroyd to Blues Brothers. And in Blues Brothers, of course, is John Belushi into Animal House, and I completely forgot she was in this film, Karen Allen into Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Nice. Not bad list. Thank you much. Thank you much. Again, I have never seen American Graffiti, um, and I've never seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and it's been decades since I've seen 1941. Obviously the rest, Animal House, Blues Brothers, Indiana Jones, Duh. So yeah, that's my list number three, baby. Nice. Thank you. So we have did I did it go into there? Did I copy it all I think over? You pasted it like in the middle of one of your previous lists. <laughs> yeah. I did the Control-Z. thing. Yep, yep, I did the thing. All right. And boom. So now that we have presented our lists, I think now is the time for us to start championing our lists so josh you want to start us off well obviously i'm going to champion my first list Vito, Vito, big yeah. ass no, <laughs> no 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 um we're not to the championing part yet we're to the part where we're gonna basically vote to cut one of our lists off of uh off of them so i'm gonna say i'm gonna definitely cut my uh, beware nothing is as it seems list shock to yeah everyone here <laughs> really i also vote for that list to go away yeah, let us never speak of it again. <laughs> Nigel, what about you? What's uh, what's on your well, cutting? Oh, go ahead, Josh. Are we? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Nigel. I guess we'll do. Uh, I mean, I'm. I don't think any. Are of we us just are doing gonna... like? Oh, go ahead. How are we doing this? Like, I thought we were gonna go through and be like, tell which one we would want to vote for or vote well, to cut. I think all of us are unanimous in voting to cut your first list. 
Yeah, this, yeah so there's really not a whole lot of debate. debate and discussion needed for that. Well, one. I thought we were gonna go through each one of our our uh, sets and then do that. Okay, if you like, want, yeah, okay. Like so, out of my lists, I would vote to uh, cut. Beware, nothing as it seems, and I'm assuming I've got your guys's vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. So out of Dan's list, Dan, which one would you like to see cut? Uh, the one that I really, I mean, I'll I would do it because it, I think they'd be some good episodes, but um. My first list with the seventh sign in it. And it's kind of like, that's a weak film. Um, it's got some good films in it. Roadhouse, Tombstone, Air Force One is stupid, but it's fun. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd, I would vote to cut my first list. Yeah, I can see that. I'm not really, I mean, it's a pretty decent list, all things considered, but not your strongest list. Yeah, so I I agree yeah, with see- that. Obviously, it's two votes for his first one, so that one will get cut. But my vote would be for your second list. Really? Oh. Yeah. But that, that would just be my, what I would vote for on Dan's three lists. Yeah, see, I think Ford v. Ferrari is kind of making um, the middle list lean a little harder for me. It's because I've never seen Ford v. Ferrari. Yeah, and it's a good film. It Definitely a good, a good film. It, but but yeah. mm-hmm. like... I think I, that's like a really strong film. I've never seen U.S. Marshals. I didn't like Zodiac, and I have no desire to watch that anytime soon. Mm-hmm. So that's probably where Ford v. Ferrari is being propped up for you. Zodiac is dragging that list down for me. Uh, that's a fair argument right there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm still going to hold to my vote. Um, mm-hmm. First one. But I mean, it, if we do two two thirds votes, like that means that we would be cutting uh, Dan's first list. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying my my choice to my vote to cut would be. Yeah. So, so I, I think two to one, the first yeah. one yeah, goes down. Yeah. Boom. All right. Now, Tom, onto your list. Which one do you want to champion to cut? Uh, well, honestly, it's just, I'm going to have to go my first one. Uh, with the exception of A Breed Apart, I've seen, I mean, I've seen Red Dawn. It's been a long time since I've seen Red Dawn. I've only seen bits of Dirty Dancing, and eh, it's not really anything I'm jumping at the bit and the breed apart do boy so it's it's not it's not going to break my heart uh, if we never see this plus we've got so many films on here that are good contenders and we're probably going to wind up on lists in the future so yeah sorry 80s up in this place but it's uh you're hitting the bricks what about you nigel uh i'm really not big on his second list at all. Like, um, I don't really like the movie Dangerous Minds. Terminator Genesis is a car wreck. <laughs> Not in the good way. Um, ugh, La La Land. Ugh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, 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 I think no. he's only hating on that one because it's it's a musical. I, well, I, I hate musicals, but no, I just no. <laughs> I might be sick if we record that episode. Um, well, the skit would be a musical. Ooh, he's got a good point. I'm still voting the second list out of here. No, I I don't want to. No, no. Well, Well, I'm going to go ahead and vote the first list just so the second list can be a contender. No, (laughs) no, I'm with you, though, Tom. Tom, I think I'm going to go ahead and vote your first list out. Even though, like, I haven't... Dirty Dancing is another one of those ones, but I have heard nothing good about Blade Runner, specifically from you, which I don't know why I take your advice on movies. I'm right a lot of the time. But uh, yeah, Dirty Dancing. I've seen the Red Dawn remake. It was meh, but I'm not judging the original Red Dawn off that one. I'd be interested to see that one. But uh, out of all those lists, like nothing's really standing out that I want to see. So I would say the first one. Okay, so like I'm more excited to see Blade Runner 2049 than I would be to see the original Blade Runner. Eh. So I think my favorite part of the Red Dawn remake is um, Chris Hemsworth and Passion Speech about the guerrilla warfare they're going to accomplish when he's saying, this is our homes. And he's saying it in his very thick Australian accent. And you're like, huh? You're supposed to be from Seattle. He's like, these are our homes. <laughs> like, oh God. <laughs> yes. Fun fact about that film is they filmed it before he got big. Yes. And they intentionally held it back from being released until after Thor was released, just so that they could get the crowds who liked Thor, if it was a hit, to uh, go to that film, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, I hate when they do that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I do too. But uh, marketing, my, that's where everything's at. All right. 
So round one of cuts have been done. We are now down to six lists. Ooh, this is where it gets difficult. Okay. Yes. Right. Josh, which one's uh, going into the wood chipper? Number two. Well, I would... Uh, it's one of those things I really liked We Must Find. Um, but Because that George and the Dragon looks like such a what's in the box film. Yeah. And I would love to watch Night at the Roxbury again. Because I think it's been years since I've seen it. I still remember that one uh, New Year's Eve, Tom, mm -hmm. where me and you got hammered and we watched it and we were totally leaning into every aspect of that movie. Oh, my God. Yes, we were absolutely obnoxious. We were. And my wife has pictures somewhere. I hope they never surface. We got pretty wasted that night. Yeah. Thank God she doesn't have video. We were. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. We were pretty licked, or, uh, licked that night. But um, I don't know. I think if I had to pick a list to go advocate for uh, i don't know probably adventures through space time i haven't seen ender's game probably since shortly after it was released and i'm very anxious uh, curious to see it again especially after all this time to kind of judge it because i know it got a lot of flack because of uh orson scott card's views at the time so it didn't do very good in the box office because that's one of the films we all saw together yeah mm -hmm. and uh I remember we had varying views on it. Like it's definitely not the best film, but I'd be curious to talk about it again. Mm -hmm. You know, so we could even, that'd be a fun episode because then we could compare and contrast our original views to watching it on the podcast. And that I, neither of you have seen John Carter. Have you? Nope. Yeah. I would love to introduce you guys to that movie. I just thought that was one of those fun films that, uh, I was pleasantly surprised by. I really think you guys would like that film. Okay. Dan, I know you would like that film. Mm-hmm. And it gives me an excuse to watch 21 Bridges again. So I would have to advocate Adventures Through Space Time. Okay, so We Must Find takes the chopping block in your voice. and well, I would, uh, Yeah, that would be my vote to cut. Okay. Like, uh, Obviously, you guys each get a vote, too. All right. Well, Nigel, you've got... What are your thoughts? I really like his third list. If we were to go with any of Josh's list, I, I really do like Adventures in Space Time. Only because, again, um, kind of like how... My third list, I've not seen most of the films on it. Haven't seen 21 Bridges, not seen John Carter, never seen The Grey. Uh, I've seen Excalibur, but it has been ages since I have seen that film. And, and I haven't seen Ender's Game since the night we all went to go see it at the theater. Okay. And to add my thoughts, this is a challenge because George of the Drag, George and the Dragon, um, it's weird because Slipstream was that what's in the box film and we watch it and now suddenly it's popping up and like lists everywhere it's and i i think we were, we're trendsetters the, yes we are it's like we we're ahead of the curve so i'm looking at george and the dragon and thinking maybe just so we can say we saw it first before cracked and all of them decided to air quotes discover it but I don't think I'm that interested. Plus, I've seen almost every film on the second list. So if I had to champion any one of your lists, Josh, I'm I'm going to make it unanimous. Adventures through space time. It starts with 21 Bridges and goes down the list with the exception of Ender's Game. I've not seen any of the other movies on there. So it's... Uh, yeah, that's got my blessing. Nice. All right. Well, now Dan, on to yours. Uh, I, I'm gonna. Ch I, I'm I'm championing the red light list. I, I I have to. Who do you trust? I mean, every one of the the, the films follow a theme of who can you trust? Um, mm -hmm. who are your mm -hmm. friends? Uh, you know, um, Twenty One Bridges is is a cop murder mystery movie. The thing is literally the 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 trope codifier for who can you trust? Mm -hmm. Um. Tango and Cash is about uh, two cops or two former cops who are framed and are trying to get uh, uh, get themselves out of it. Um, Nighthawks is about a detective looking for a uh, terrorist and not knowing who he is yet. Uh, Blade Runner, I mean, the replicants and all that stuff, like who can you trust? And Raiders. So I mean, just, I don't know. Well, Raiders is going to be on everyone's list no matter what. So I won't, I won't champion that, but 21 Bridges, The Thing, Tango and Cash, Nighthawks, Blade Runner. I've not seen any of those films except for Raiders of the Lost Ark. And I really want to watch them. And I want to watch them with you guys. Um, plus, I think some of the skits for some of these movies will be absolutely gold. <laughs> so, oh, my God. The Thing, skit yes. and Tango yeah. and Cash. 
Yeah, and Blade right. Runner. I think the skit for Blade Runner will be great too. But you know, the replicants and the the the, the, the eye test. They do that little eye test and all that stuff. Like, oh yeah, yeah. The um the void comp test. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, oh. like, I think this. I think the the entire journey just lends itself to awesome creative writing between the three of us with the skits and the cold opens and all that other good stuff. So Dan, I'm hats championing off my to you. Hats mm-hmm. off to you. I think this is a podcast first. You're advocating a list because you think that the skits we would write would be hilarious. Dude, they, they would be great for every one of I'm these. Not say, I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying I don't think anybody has, anyone has advocated a list because they think that they would make amazing skits, and that's awesome. And they, this isn't <laughs> one a bold that... strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays <laughs> off. Some of these no, I'm envisioning are... the thing uh, skit right now. It looks like, okay, Dan, what's going on? And then Dan eats me. And then suddenly <laughs> it's me, Dan, and Tom in a room together. And or just, or like all three of them end up being monsters or something. I, 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 I'm seeing that. And I'm like, I want to do that skit now. <laughs> yeah. Like that's, that was what I was thinking of when I, I was, that's why I wanted to do this. That's why I was like, I'm trying so hard to get from, from 42 to Raiders in six movies with Blade Runner in there somewhere because I know the fucking sketch for that film will be gold. And <laughs> I wanted to do it so bad. And same with and just and Tango and Cash is like a buddy cop film, but it's a more serious buddy cop film. So I'm like, you know, it's just like these skits just lend themselves to it. And this is a time where I'm like, I'm not championing a list because this movie's great or that well, or this movie's like popular or this is gonna be a good movie for the audience or the audience loves to watch us suffer. Anything like that. I'm like the three of us, I want to do this list for the three of us. I think it'll be awesome. And yes, mm-hmm. there are some big movies on here. The thing is a popular film that would, I could see that would be big. You know, Blade Runner is a big popular movie. Hell it's the cyberpunk trope codifier. So mm-hmm. um, anyways, I'm championing my third list. I am, uh, I'm, I'm going to die on this hill. Yep, and I already said my piece about your second list, so I would vote for your third list as well. So yeah, yeah, you had me at Blade Runner. Um, <laughs> yeah, seriously, almost every movie on your third list is a movie I want you guys to see because Tango and Cash I loved as a kid. Never seen it. My dad loved that film, and I've never seen oh, it. Oh, it's it's I've seen it with adult eyes um, a few years back, so. I know what we're getting into. It's not a serious one. It's definitely um, tongue in cheek comedy kind of deal, but I think we could enjoy it. The fact that neither of you, well, especially you, Nigel, have not seen The Thing, it hurts me. It's like to know you were so deprived for so long. Yeah. I, I gotta- it's a movie I've never seen, but I could tell you all the beats to it. Just like my mom has never seen Star Wars, but knows the plot forwards and mm-hmm. backwards. I've mm-hmm. never seen The Thing. I know the plot of the thing, but I've never seen it. And I'm just like, I really want to see this film. I really mm-hmm. want to see the thing. Oh my God. Nighthawks. I've never seen, but I'm, it's what's one of Stallone's early action films. It's not and even it's- really an action film. It's, it's Stallone shortly after making Rocky or Rocky two, when he was still kind of being touted as this really super serious Oscar worthy kind of actor. So it's a cop movie and he's in the movie with Billy D Williams, but it's played very seriously. It's not a, uh, it's not the kind of cop movies that Stallone would later make like Tango and cash or um, Mm -hmm. demolition man or other movies that Stallone made where he's like Cobra, like Mm -hmm. other movies where he became a cop. He's not a lone one man army pun intended Rambo in this movie. He's, He's it's a or much demolition man. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. He's not a demolition man. He's not a demolition man in Rambo in this. He's actually his acting's more like the first two Rocky films, Ooh. where he's super super serious. Now I'm like getting to the point where I'm almost like hitting on this list here. So it's it's time for me to pump the brakes a bit. We want to save some for later. But yeah, so yep. all right, let's go on Thompson. Where is uh, which one uh, are you gonna advocate to cut? This is hard. This is hard. I do want to see Sweet Liberty just because I I like comedies and I've seen the ending of this film. So I'm like, okay, what's the rest of the 99% of this? I'm not looking forward to Genesis um, just because it looks bad. But And Blade Runner 2049 on the second list is the one that if I was to champion it is the reason I champion because... It's a movie I want you guys to see. It's so good. But 
Summer of Classics, I gotta keep. That's, that's one of my three. It's just unfairly stacked. You got American Graffiti, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Almost all of these are just heavyweight champions. I mean, in, if this was a pro wrestling staple or stable, this would be the uh, the ultimate powers um, plus the four horsemen. It's just unfair. So, sorry, historical liberties. I want to stand by you, but she, I, Summer of Classics is the one I would champion. Uh, uh, so is it Nigel that uh, gives her thoughts next, or is it you, Josh? We already know that I don't want to do the second list. Uh, not <laughs> La La Land, no. Term- G- Genesis, no. Dangerous Minds, no. 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 So, so Tom, if- I think we should both advocate your second list. Please, God, no. <laughs> yes. You know what? You're right, because we do have... We're talking about skits we love to make. I, you know, I'm telling you right now, you guys do this list, and I'm going to do my third one. We're going to just do a... <laughs> I'm, yeah. <laughs> Every night on this for the next six weeks, we're all watching a different film. The Fire Pit Podcast. Nights. <laughs> <laughs> love it. It'd just be damn being like, fuck those guys. I'll write my own goddamn skits. Um, <laughs> fuck you, Tom. Fuck you, Josh. Ha ha ha. And on to the film. <laughs> Highest rated episodes. <laughs> you stole our audience. <laughs> but yeah, so Summer of Classics, I got a champion. And yeah, I, I, I'm right coming. there with you, too. I'm going to I want to go ahead and uh, vote for number 3 too. So number 2 is uh you're done. As much as I want to get to La La Land. I I actually do want to see that. Ryan Gosling's a great actor. I mean he- I started watching it with my daughter once cuz we watched a musical and she really liked it and I'm like, "Oh, something we my daughter can do together." And then I downloaded this and we started watching it and I don't remember what happened but we didn't finish it. Well, considering both of us have the attention span of a goldfish, the fact that we watched a movie together was probably amazing enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that doesn't necessarily say it's a bad film. It's just not one to keep a short attention span. So, uh, but yeah, so I think we're now at the part of the podcast where we now make the final cut. Who's going to be the winner, winner, chicken dinner? To another section of selections episode of the fire pit i am as always your interspersal host editor and cartographer tom congratulations you found the x that marks the spot where you parked good luck getting out of all of this traffic though <laughs> but thank you for marking your spot here at the fire pit. We're at our ninth selection section of the podcast, having knocked it out of the park with 42 and looking for a way to raid some arcs with Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. What crusades will we join? What temples will we find? Well, we won't know until we get there, now will we? But... If you want people to know about your products, or if you want us to know about a destination film we should try for, or if you just want us to know about a particular film we've overlooked, then feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just put fire pit in the subject line, as well as what you want to email us about. Whether it's to commission an ad, request a shout out, give your thoughts on past episodes or ideas for future episodes, and send us all your words. From there, we'll read it, bury it in a long forgotten temple, surround it with all manner of traps and perils, mark the location on a non geographically specific map, and never respond. I'm sure some adventurous archaeologists will come along and dig it up at some point. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. 
But it's time for me to get back to mapping out that next journey. I'll let you get back to the episode. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. I understand it's going to be hard for you guys to vote against my list. We haven't picked my list yet officially, but obviously this is going to be my second in a row. I can feel it already. And you just, you know, we can we can totally do it that way. The third list, I'll give you guys a, a pity. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll go ahead and go on to our final round of cuts. I vote to cut Tom's list. <laughs> <laughs> right out the gate, Josh. <laughs> I also vote to cut Tom's list. That's weird. <laughs> Tom's all like, wait, this Tom's all like, this rule is stupid. I'd like to lodge a formal complaint. This um this contracting bid has been um it's, it's suspicious. The appeal process takes exactly six weeks, so we will log it. <laughs> we'll let you know. That doesn't seem fair at all. <laughs> Just going to cross out my summer of classics now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... It was a good list, though, Tom. I'm not going to lie. It's a good list. (laughs) No, it's okay. It's fine. I had my one. So it's going to be another uh, seven or eight months before I get another list. Okay. No, no, no. I'm okay with this. It's fine. If you want to blame anyone for that drought, Blame Josh. If he hadn't come up with Slipstream, you would have had the list for. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. If he hadn't come up with Slipstream, <laughs> you would have had the list for sure for Empire. That's all right. Yeah. Ha- I got the past this past journey, and we all know that was such a great journey. So well, thank dude, you, Josh, for dude, making that happen. The movies might not have all been great, but it was a fun journey, especially the sketches. The whole the, yeah. doing every every week was a new game. You know, and, and the concussions and the, the, the wrestling, the wrestling heels and all that stuff. And I got to say, Rudy's sketch was probably one of the funnest ones. I've en- the one I probably enjoyed the most in a long, long um, time, if not the most. I oh haven't my God, yeah. I haven't laughed that hard at our own sketches since um, NASA IT for yeah. Armageddon. That was the last time I laughed that hard. That was a great one. <laughs> Oh God, I love that one. And for those listeners, go back and watch the the Armageddon episode. Um, yeah, that's where we, you get yeah that we did a great yeah we did a great sketch called uh, NASA IT. Um, at some point in all three of our lives, we've all worked for desktop user support IT at some point, and so th- that doing that sketch was just kind of it wrote itself. We just kind of took experience that, was, that we all had on the job and just applied them to NASA and. Everything ended with a dis- another disaster that was showing in Armageddon, and it was brilliant. It was so funny. I laughed so hard yes. at that one. Yeah. That, that was a good one. But even then, I'd say like Rudy. That episode Rudy was awesome too. It's like <laughs> we destroyed that poor kid's dreams. <laughs> Are we the heels? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then we leaned into that hard. <laughs> no. I like the creep in that Oreo. <laughs> God, <Gross>. not again. <laughs> That Rudy episode is just probably one of our best overall episodes in a long time, too. <laughs> so, yeah, Tom, no punishment for Last Journey, because that was a good one. Uh, uh, that being said, I'm still voting off your list. <laughs> That's all right. I'm okay with that. So, Josh, yeah, this list wasn't the greatest. I probably just cost my vote for this one, didn't I? <laughs> Don't worry. Dan goes before me, Josh. You can turn it around. <laughs> So, Nigel, um, what about you? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, obviously voting off your list. Um, honestly, it's not that I don't mind it. Um, 20, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was looking at Josh's. Um, it's, it's just, um, your Actually, list... no, wait, oh, I did skip. Yeah, Josh, you're supposed to vote which list, uh, since we've all voted out. Is, are we just voting out the third lists? Well, or? no, no, we were just going to process was, this was the, uh, now this was the uh, third round where we um, all we basically vote the one list down to the top two. Okay. So um, at this point we're we're voting a, to kick a list out. Mm-hmm. Now we're voting four lists, yes. and you can vote for your own list. So oh. everything up to this point has been you vote to remove said list. This is the only time we vote to keep a list. Because round one is basically we uh, vote to remove one out of each of our lists. 
Round two is we vote to remove the other one, and then we're down to the top three, and then we vote to remove one of the three. And now we're to the okay. top two, so now we're voting which list to watch. Okay, okay. I thought we were at that point. Yeah, and just to make it unanimous, I, I also vote out my um my third list. It's um all of those films we're going to get to at some point. Yeah, so. on, that's that was my only issue with it was I like, um I've seen every, with the exception of uh, American Graffiti, I've seen every movie on that list. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was, that was the only, my only big caveat to it was I've seen every movie on that list. Yeah. So unanimous, unanimous <laughs> summer of classics is out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So going on to the uh, final, the finals, so to speak, like all honesty, I would be okay either way. We're watching 21 Bridges, it seems, regardless of what happens in this out or the outcome of this selection section. So I am perfectly content with that. That being said, however, I really enjoy my list. I really do. I want to watch John Carter with you mm-hmm. guys. Um, you guys turned me on to Excalibur when I saw that on the list. I really wanted to see that one because I got it confused with a different one. Um, never seen The Grey, and I've been wanting to watch Ender's Game again. Because, like I said, I would like to see how that goes. But I think if I was to vote for a uh, a list between mine and Dan's, um, I would go ahead and put my vote on Dan's. Partially because it's been two journeys since Dan's had a list. But the other thing is I think he has a bit of a stronger list. The thing, Tango and Cash, Nighthawks, they don't ring. I haven't seen, I don't even know if I, I know the thing. It's one of those ones I haven't seen or I have seen. I think we watched it in biology in high school. Um, never seen Blade Runner. But uh, it's one of those things, it's like, you haven't seen that? Same way you guys look at me when I say I haven't seen Raiders all the way through. So I would honestly say my vote will be for Dan's list. Nigel? My vote's also for my list. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, honestly, Josh, your list is fine. I, I really like your list. Um, my only thing is, uh, I, I, I forgot, I have seen The Grey. That is the movie with Liam Neeson fighting wolves. I didn't care for it. Um, Ender's Game was okay. Um, I, I remember thinking the book was a little bit better. The um, book definitely was better. Yeah. Well, I remember when we saw that movie, the three of us had wildly different um, thoughts on it because we had seen it at the time where I had read the book, but it had been a while ago. Tom had never read the book and you were reading the book while we watched I, that. No, film. I had just finished the oh, book. Oh, that's right. You had just finished it. You know, I read mm-hmm. it back in high school. Um, or whatever. And Don, Tom had never wrote it and you had just finished it. So all three of us had like wildly like different thoughts about it. Like, so, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, other than that, and John Carter, I think that's a movie we'll get to someday just because it's, it's got a lot of solid actors in it. Like I know William yeah. Defoe is in there, but he's kind of a voice as a CG character, but it's, it's a movie I definitely want to get with you, get to with yeah, you but guys. But if, if we can let, we can we can tie Willem Dafoe to voicing a CG character if we tied James Earl Jones to voicing Darth Vader because he's not the guy yeah. in the costume. Yeah, you I know. know, and that's that's so I said he, William Dafoe's in there and he's a big name. We can get to a lot of movies with him. And, and technically, we we tied Ernie Reyes Jr. to uh oh wait no we didn't we didn't tie Ernie, yeah Ernie Reyes Jr. appears out of costume in Terminator or in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too. But anywho, yeah, the only thing I'm championing about my list. I'm not going to vote for it, obviously, but the only thing I'm champion about my list is I've not seen any of these films except for Raiders. And I'm just like this. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this podcast was to see movies I haven't seen yet and see them with you guys and put thoughts down on them. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's the only thing I'm championing about my list. Mm -hmm. Um, So I obviously can't vote for my own. So Tom, well, you can, if you want, this is the round where we can vote for. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'm voting for my list only because I've not seen, well, two reasons. One, I've not seen these films except for Raiders. And two, the skits write themselves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and I would say if he, Dan was going to vote for my list, Tom has the tie-breaking vote. But at this point, Tom's vote doesn't matter. So let's go on to the next segment. <laughs> Once again, we we edit out the editor. <laughs> I'm kidding, Tom. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to remember this. He is going to remember <laughs> all of this. Yeah. Um, I think I found the reoccurring joke for the next journey. <laughs> but from my end, <clears throat> obviously my vote does not count. <laughs> but um, this is a rare Sophie's choice for me because I have a list of movies, of the majority of which I have never seen. 
versus a list with movies I want you guys to see. And I think, yeah, Dan's third list is the one I go with because I want you guys to see Blade Runner. I want Nigel to see The Thing. I love Tango and Cash growing up, so I want to, I want you guys to see that. And we've all talked about 21 Bridges so much. It's, I want to see that film with you guys. I kind of feel like if we don't do it now, we're just not going to do it. It's just like... Seriously, so... Cause didn't, there's a lot didn't, of actors in it, though. Well, also, yeah, but didn't two of us have 21 Bridges going into 42 as well? Yeah, yeah. I know I had a list of getting going into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make this unanimous. Nigel gets it with um, wow. list number three. What do you call this list again, Nigel? Who who can you trust? Who can you trust? Aye. Right. So yeah, I'm. I got this one. Plus, we get to see Stallone with a beard because doesn't he have? Doesn't he have a beard? Yeah, it's like I said. It, Nighthawks is a weird movie, or not a weird movie. It's just a weird point in Stallone's career. It's like it's post Rocky, post Rocky two, and I think post First Blood. Like, I think he had made Rambo one at this point. And if anyone who's ever seen Rambo one knows Rambo two and three and on the more recent Rambos is where he became a cartoon character. Mm -hmm. Um, He basically became a live action GI Joe Um, Rambo first blood part one. And it's an action movie, but it's an action drama movie. Like it's very, very, very intense compared to like the other Rambo films. Like it doesn't have a high body count. Um, In fact, I think only one person dies in the film Mm -hmm. Stallone doesn't spout off one liners while he's killing folks left and right. Um, it's, it's a dark film, very dark film, like just how it is. Well, and isn't it spoiler alert? The book Rambo shoots himself in the head at the very end of it. Yeah. And the only reason why they changed it in the movie, and I'd love to get to this movie someday. If we ever do get to first blood part one, I'd love to talk about it someday, but the only reason why they changed it in the book, or I mean, in the movie, wasn't because of the sequels. They didn't think they'd make sequels to the film. It was because the director thought this story's already depressing enough. We don't need to have the guy killing himself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's why they changed the the ending to the movie. It's just because the the story, the director felt the story was already depressing. Yeah, no fooling. And I've never seen first blood. So I'm really looking forward to the day we get there. Yeah. It's a good film. All right. Well guys, um, I guess uh, congratulations, Nigel, for getting your list. Thank picked. you, thank you. Honestly, you, came, not bad for a list. I came up literally ten minutes before we went on the air. <laughs> well, do you want to go ahead and do your uh, your hype section? Yes, hype this up, Nigel. Okay. Uh, oh, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Um, mm, we're go- well, it's- we're going on an adventure. Yeah, but it's also it's like a spooky adventure because who can you trust? So, hmm, maybe mm. make it like a kind of hmm, suspicious. I was also thinking that it's a shame that we're not a visual podcast like on YouTube, because I was thinking that our opening intro, this journey could be like in Raider or in all the Indiana Jones movies when he's traveling, you have to see the plane on the map stopping at all the different locations and mm-hmm. all that. Like, that's that would, true. That's true. Do it yeah. that way then. Do it that way. Not, not visually, but be like Tom add a sound effect to rolling out a map or just like paper rolling and then be like, all right, guys, this is what we're going to do. Like, read it out like it's like a heist oh, slash adventure oh, thing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, rolling on a map. Okay, guys, we're on an adventure. Okay, we know where we're going. We know how we have to get there. We got to go through Chadwick Boseman to get to 21 Bridges. Then Keith David to The Thing. Kurt Russell to Tango and Cash. Sylvester Stallone to Nighthawks. And then we're going to go with Rutger Hauer to Blade Runner. And then Harrison Ford to Raiders of the Lost Ark. I just hope we live to tell the tale. That was really good. Do it again, but say more uh, one-liners like, and this is where it's going to get hard. Oh, okay. Like, okay. This yeah, is yeah, going to yeah, be I the like tricky that. part. Okay. So just okay. add a couple uh, one-liners here and there when you're doing it. Oh, okay. I'm actually, I know what I'm going to say for Nighthawks because it's a different movie it's from Stallone. Okay. All right, guys. This is going to get weird here on this one, guys. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Here we are, guys. This one's going to get weird. We're on an adventure. We know where we're going, and here's how we're going to have to get there. We're taking Chadwick Boseman to 21 Bridges, and then an incredibly dangerous moment in the Arctic where we take Keith David to the thing. And then we take Kurt Russell, Russell. Damn it. I got to redo that again. <clears throat> no, to say like, and it's going to get chilly, but we're going to take Keith David to the thing. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, we're on an adventure. We know where we're going and here's how we have to get there. We're taking Chadwick Boseman to 21 bridges and then it's going to get chilly. It's going to get frigid when we take Keith David 
to the thing and then Kurt Russell to Tango and Cash. But here's where it gets weird. Here's where it gets really different. We take Sylvester Stallone to Nighthawks and then Rutger Hauer to Blade Runner and then Harrison Ford to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Gentlemen, I just hope we live to tell the tale. <laughs> Tom, does that work for you? Very good. And I get to do the uh, hype section this time around. I don't, I like didn't hear Tom. Hype. Tom, does that work for you? Tom? Tom? Did we oh lose my Tom? God, did we lose Tom? Oh, no, I was on mute. Oh. Sorry about that. Sorry about okay. that. I was just so excited. <laughs> you left him speechless, Stan. <laughs> I thought Tom was like, fuck, this is stupid. <laughs> No, there was a cop like driving behind me, so it's like oh, vote, shit, I don't... vote out my list, will you? <laughs> you get to the hype, it's like, yeah, we're just gonna watch this stupid list with a bunch of movies that no one really cares about. <laughs> well, anyways, Tom, what'd you think? I like this. It works very nicely. Um, okay. I- I'm trying to think here. Um, add a little, like, add a little color for the Tango Cats. Say next, we're gonna buddy up with Kurt Russell. Oh, okay, Tango okay. Yeah, All man, right, one yeah, more time. I would say one more time. Have one. Have something, of one or two words for every movie. Okay. Like it's going to get sure. chilly. And Tango and Catch, it's like like Tom said, we've got to buddy up on this one. Mm-hmm. Okay. And like Blade Runner, it's got, got to be careful on this one. Just keep All it right. really short. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. Gentlemen, we are on an adventure. First, we're going to flood the city with blue with Chadwick Boseman and 21 Bridges. Then it's going to get chilly with Keith Davey and The Thing. But then after that, we buddy up. Kurt Russell. Welcome to America! And Tango and Cash. Here's where it gets different. We take Sylvester Stallone and Nighthawks. And then we try to figure out who's who. So please pay attention. With Rutger Hauer and Blade Runner. And then put on your hats as we take Harrison Ford to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Gentlemen, I hope we live to tell the tale. I think we could work with this. I think we can work with this. So Nigel... Kudos. Kudos. Thank you. Well, real quick, right, well, before we go, I mean, do we have an idea for the name of this journey? Ooh, that's a good call. Um, I almost want to stick with the fire pit strikes something, but I don't think there's anything that would work with this one. Um, the fire pit strikes treasure. Mm. Um, the other one I was thinking is uh, like, uh, I don't know, like, well, what, what's a term for traveling for treasure? Um caravan raid raid no cavalcade no um um not so spelunking no that's cave stuff hmm i mean hunting nigel anything coming to your mind because the fire fire pit podcast in raiders of the lost films Mm. you guys can say it sucks it's okay you're not gonna hurt my feelings it sucks oh okay. by god does it suck all right Ooh. see there you go there you go i'm married i have no ego to bruise um part of me wants to keep with the fire pit does something for this season that seems to be working well the other part of me wants to go back to our old format where it was like you know groundhog's day parade to punxatani or field trip to kingtown mm-hmm. um Mm. A fire pit strikes forth. Mm. Sets mm. forth. Sally's forth. Uh, fire pit Sally's forth. Fire uh, pit saunders on. Yeah. Fire uh, pit. I mean, we don't have to solve this puzzle. Yeah, it could be an epiphany yet. moment like we've had in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping we have an idea before we do the hype section, but you know what? Yeah, it doesn't it have to be. A week it's to not think essential. About it. Yeah, uh, Dan will be at a red light and he'll come up with it. Yeah, it's, it's one of those. Got a good track we, record now. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like sometimes it just comes to you. like. I remember we were debating and debating and thinking and couldn't come up with an idea for uh, the field trip to Kingtown, and then Dan came up with that one, and we're like sold. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, but it'll come to you guys. I've got nothing at this point. Mm, me so, either. Yep. I had I, I, thought I had an idea, but I couldn't think of the word. But I'm like, it would work. What's the word? I can't think of it. And then I lost it. But I'm tired now, and I think the COVID is kicking in. So, Oh, no. Well, Josh isn't going to make it to the next journey. Oh, no. It was nice knowing you, Josh. This is the vaccine, Tom. I'm going to be around for a while. It was nice knowing you. Oh, it was. It's 
Go, so, go. anywho, congratulations, Nigel, on getting your list chosen. It was a fantastic list and well deserved of uh, getting uh, for the next five weeks getting the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, thanks. Like I said, literally came up with that list at a red light on the way home. I heard Keith David's voice on the radio, and I'm like, oh my God, he was in the thing. And Kurt Russell's well. in the thing. <gasps> that was my epiphany. I'm like, oh, now I can I get Tango and Cash. And, yeah. So, congratulations, Nigel. Um, but that does it for tonight's show. As always, as a reminder, Please uh, look us up on Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, or really any other way you can listen to your podcasts. We're probably on there. Um, as Tom was tonight, we slutted ourselves up and hoard ourselves out. But uh, regular episodes, uh, Tuesdays at 6 p.m. But please like and subscribe on whichever medium you decided to listen to us on. It really helps us out. But also, if you haven't already, stop what you're doing. Go out and leave us a review. Just do it. So you give us that five-star rating, give us a review. It definitely helps us out. It gives uh, the algorithm a chance for us to show up on searches and everything else like that. So if you like our podcast, please go out there and leave us a review. Write something out. If you do, we'll read it on the podcast. Um, they're always appreciated. If you're going to leave us a one-star review, just you can ignore that last part. But um, we do appreciate the reviews. We appreciate... Uh, Honestly, we just appreciate you listening to the episode. But if you are willing to, go out and leave us a review. So thank you. And as always, you can join us on Discord. Um, <clears throat> the Discord is in the episode's description on firepit.podbeat.com. It's also on, uh, you can find us on discord.me slash the fire pit. Is it the fire pit or fire pit? Just it, fire pit. Just fire pit. So discord.me slash fire pit uh, forward slash fire pit. Uh, also, the link to the Discord is on our Twitter, which is uh, at fire pit CCE. Uh, but join us on the Discord, man. It's fun. We have the we have a lot of discussions about current and past episodes. Uh, it's been a little quiet, uh, mostly because uh, we've been busy with work. Uh, the world's kind of sort of getting back to normal, or at least trying to. So some of our listeners haven't had as much free time in the afternoons as they used to. Either way, you know, the more people that join the Discord, the more uh, discussions we have going on at all hours of the day and night. So join us. Have a good time with us. And we really appreciate it. And if you also want to enjoy some personal conversations with us, you can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, described in the interspersal. If you want to send us a long message, short message, a happy message, sad message, or even a name recommendation for our journey, it's up to you. Also, be sure to like our Facebook page page and follow us on twitter at firepitcce both are linked in this episode's description and i would like to uh because it's been a uh, more than a minute since we have shouted out this person i want to shout out Tyrick thorne he's always on uh, discord even during the quiet times after he listens to an episode to give us uh some feedback and comment on that episode so as always Tyrick, thank you for your continued listening um it's always appreciated and uh Another shout out to my parents because they absolutely hated um, our take on uh, Wimbledon and the natural. We were right. You were wrong, but I still love you. <laughs> it's not our fault. Josh's parents have bad taste in films. <laughs> Just kidding. We love you, Mrs. Mrs. Josh. And they will probably have a small guest spot because I am going on vacation in July. Um, I'm loading up the schedule and it's just taking forever right now. So let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. It'll be not this journey, but next journey. I'll have to be recording an episode from Oklahoma, so they will probably have a cameo. Oh. Oh. Awesome. Yeah, I will actually be driving up there shortly after we record selection section number 10. So, uh, yeah, the, so look forward to that in about a couple months' time. You heard it here first. I see. Say, I haven't talked to your parents in a long time. I'm actually kind of looking forward to that personally. I haven't seen them in almost a year and a half, so I'm looking forward to it as well. Awesome. Uh, I would like to give a special shout out to Peggy, the OG friend of the channel. Thank you very much for listening as always. Thank you very much for the feedback. Also, a uh, special shout out to Rob, who always looks forward to these selection section episodes. Uh, he loves hearing where we're going to go next. He loves hearing us uh, map it all out and chart it all out. So shout out to Rob. And also shout out to Danielle, who always has something to say about the movies we didn't pick. So, <laughs> um, But you know what? That's, that's what it's for. That's what we like hearing. We like hearing the discussion. And <clears throat> if you're disappointed we didn't go with a certain list or didn't get to a certain film, don't worry. We'll get there eventually. So uh, thank you. And shout out to everyone else who listens to us. 
Oh, she's definitely going to have some words about us skipping um, Excalibur, that's for sure. But in the meantime, Danielle, we love you. It was a hard one to say no to, but this third list we had to pick. But I'd like to shout out from my side, uh, Zencaster, the recording platform upon which all these dulcet tones of ours well, are recorded. Uh, we switched to them a few months back when Skype decided to snipe one of our selection section episodes and we've been on Zencaster ever since and we do not plan on looking back 18 weeks 18 weeks you had a skype and then you blew it Zencaster has not blown it it's a free online recording tool you can pay for the greater features but we've gotten so much use out of the free stuff you don't have to they're also not paying for this little spot so they're getting this plug for free but if they want more, um, we won't say no to some cash for that. Also want to shout out Podbean, the site upon which this podcast is hosted. I haven't shouted out them since the early days of the podcast, but want to thank them for you know, letting us have our podcast on here with so many others, including uh, the Critical Role podcast. So thanks to them. And personally, some of our Facebook followers, uh, two of the latest ones, in fact, Cincy and Patsy. Thank you for joining us here. You, along with the several hundreds of Facebook followers who pop in, if you know, whether you check out an episode, just like seeing us post stuff, or just like seeing that we're still out there. Either way, it's appreciated. Thanks for helping to keep these fire pits burning. Awesome. Awesome. This has been another successful selection section. What number nine? Yeah, yeah. Number nine. There was yeah, so much fun a... too. I I do like the format where we all three come up with two or three different lists and present them instead of one person being responsible for coming up with a list every time. So yeah, because if yeah. were the case, I think it'd be Josh's turn this time, and then we'd uh, let's see. Let me scroll back up to what that first one is. Um, Venom, Mystery Men. Yeah, we'd uh, we'd probably be watching Beware. So. <laughs> Thank God we had a choice. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wrote that list with the intention of it getting cut. <laughs> well, mission accomplished, yeah. Josh. <laughs> the Avengers has 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. And no, it's not the one with Captain America. But it is the one with uh, James Bond. But anywho, so next week, guys, we get to go check out 21 different bridges. Mm. I'm looking forward to this. We get to see all 21 bridges in New York. Um, it's a very thorough documentary narrated by Chadwick Boseman. Um, where we basically go through and get to talk about the architectural and the history about all bridges in New York. Awesome. It's it's really entertaining. Wow. It's only about five hours long. Oh, okay. Well, cool. It's um, awesome. I, I guess uh, so we'll be recording until about four in the morning. Yeah. Cool. Um, honestly, this may have to be a two-parter. Um, there's just so much history to each one of these. And, and I'm going to let you know, I got the extended cut which is approximately nine and a half hours. Oh, oh! I can't wait till we get to the section about trestle bridges. I love those. I'm looking forward to the suspension bridge stuff myself. Ooh. Yeah, it's it it gets suspenseful. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> I feel dirty. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you should, but no, we are watching the uh, late and great Chadwick Boseman and Twenty One Bridges, a very awesome. Um, crime thriller next week so stay tuned for that and uh, as always I've been Josh I've been Dan I've been Tom thanks for listening this has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment LLC good luck out there Gentlemen, we are on an adventure. First, we're going to flood the city with blue with Chadwick Boseman and 21 Bridges. Then it's going to get chilly with Keith David and The Thing. But then after that, we buddy up with Kurt Russell. Welcome to America! And Tango and Cash. Here's where it gets different. We take Sylvester Stallone and the Nighthawks. And then we'll try to figure out who's who. Oh, please pay attention. With Rutger Howard and Blade Runner. And then put on your hats as we take Harrison Ford. Raiders of the Lost Ark.
Hike up those boots and crack those whips, because the fire pit is swinging into adventure. Follow Dan, Tom, and Josh as they race the skies and follow the dotted lines to the X that marks the spot of this journey. Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's danger. It's deception. But hopefully there won't be any snakes. Every Tuesday, here at the Fire Pit. Gentlemen, I hope we live to tell the tale.